God doesn't do it as man does. Like many things, God doesn't do as man does. God doesn't see as man sees. One of my particular favorite scriptures in the Bible, in the book of Samuel, is that, that, that God doesn't look at the outward appearance. But God looketh at the heart. It says man looks at the outward appearance, but, but God, he, he looks at the heart. And so uh, there are two building in the text, but God is building as an architect. And man is building as a contractor. <laughs> the architect designs exactly what's going to be built. The architect already sees it as it shall be. Uh -oh. Even before any materials arrive on the site, the architect already knows that the hallway will be here and the bathroom is over there. Come on. To the T, the specifics are already laid out. Been certified, been approved. The builder's job is just to come in and follow what's already been laid and presented out. But it's interesting that, that when, we, we, when we read the scripture, we don't really get the power of it because we, we still somehow believe in the church. There's a, there's, a, there's a lie. There's a couple of lies out here. Yeah. On God's people and on God. Yeah. Somehow we believe that God is interested in everything that we want. <laughs> Come on, man. <laughs> that, that somehow he, he's caught up on what the desires of your heart are. The Bible does talk about the desires of your heart. But nowhere does it ever say that God is completely vested in what you want. As a matter of fact, he has a track record of going in a whole other direction. Y'all don't, don't like that. Y'all heard, heard Tweet Clark sing that song. No, it wasn't Tweet Clark. Who sang that song? They said, if I were in control, that was Sean Pace. Yeah. She said, if I were in control, things would have worked out differently. I, I would have done stuff. Oh, y'all don't like it. Some of y'all sitting next to what would have been different if he was in it. <laughs> If I were in control. <laughs> it's, it's, it's funny, it's funny, it's funny that, that we, we have this, this perception that God is completely uh, at our disposal. And it's funny because Christians grow in the church and grow in their spirituality with this kind of, it's kind of a, 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 an abnormal spiritual growth because it's this idea that somehow God is here to be our servant. Yeah. When the truth is, it's flipped around, we're here to be his servant. And when we trust him, we're not paying him off. Come on, Ephesians, Ephesians 2 and 8 says we are saved by grace through faith. And it's not because of our works that any man could boast about it. The, the Old Testament says that our righteousness is as filthy rags before him. You have to understand that because you trust God doesn't mean that God owes you anything. You got to stop coming to church like you're paying God a bill, like you're doing something for God. <laughs> you can count on this one thing uh, for sure, and that is that, God, that, that life will deal you a card that you can't whip with your bank account. <laughs> Life will deal you a hand that you you, you you can't be cute and get out of the day. Life will throw something at you where all of your connections won't be able to fix it. You. And the only one you can turn to is God. It's God. That's the only place you can turn. That's the only thing you can do. And so you, you, there's this idea that, 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 that God is vested in what we want to do. But the truth is the Bible teaches us that God is sovereign. Let me hurry along. He can do whatever he wants to do, when he wants to do it. However, oh, y'all heard that in this church. Most churches don't learn about that. We don't believe God is sovereign. We believe that he's here to serve us. And we think that if we praise him enough, and if we attend enough, and if we act right enough, if we beg long enough, that somehow he'll give in. But God doesn't give in. We call him our heavenly father, but he doesn't act like your earthly father. See, your earthly father would give you passes on certain stuff. But it's God, he, he's not a respecter of persons. 
person, but he is a respecter of principle, and he expects you to do what he said to do. I ain't got help with here. And you can't get around it. The Bible says, my word will not return unto me void, but it will accomplish what I sent it to do. That means that it doesn't matter how long you walk away, God ain't going to treat you like the education system will do you. They'll see you looking silly in fourth grade, all bigger than everybody else, and just pass you to the next grade. But God will leave you right there looking silly. Look out of place, your legs bumping up against the desk, the desk off the floor, and God will leave, still won't pass you. He said, I meant for you to do what I said for you. Somebody say, Get with what God. Sarah laughed at God and, 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 and didn't believe that God was going to do what he said he was going to do. Well. And at the end of, the, of all of her planning and her plotting, go ahead and get Hagar and just go ahead and have a child with her. Trying to find a different way to be blessed. Something that makes sense to your mindset, that, that agrees with what you think might work out. Go and do that. And, and at the end of all that, uh, Abraham had to go back and get Sarah and do what God said because he's the architect. We are just the contractors. We're just building what God has already laid out. Do you, do you, you have to at some point come to the conclusion that I gotta stop at, 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 at trying to get my own will accomplished and get with what God is doing. Uh, 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 see, we gotta stop just preaching uh, 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 the the the, uh, the resurrection sermons around Easter. We gotta preach more of that during our, throughout the year. And Jesus said, uh, "If it be that we will let this cup pass from me." Uh, saying not my will but because God is up to something God is doing something and and, and this particular text it, it, it does a couple of things two things it does one thing is it declares that you can't build something outside of what God has already released for you to build I don't care how much you dreamed about it, but you can't have something that God said didn't uh, authorize for you to have. You hear what I'm saying to you? It's too many folk in the church building stuff that God didn't tell them to build, then sign his signature onto it, and then frustrated because God won't hold up what you built up. I ain't gonna to hear it. If you build it up, you're gonna have to hold it up because unless he builds it, the builder is building. This is declaring one that you can't build what God doesn't want you to build, and the second thing is that it is, it is a calling. It's a declaration that you can't build what God doesn't want you to build, and it's a calling. It's a calling to faith because it says that you, you can't build it unless God builds it. It says it doesn't matter if you the watchman can stay up all night and watch, but you but you but you to be all in vain unless. God guards the city, you understand? And so what it is, it's actually a calling. Second of all, it's a calling to trust God. To have faith in God. And if I can leave you with anything that will really give you a push, a launch into your new year, that would be for you to learn to trust God. Even when there's nothing you can do about it. Because that really is the real uh, uh, bottom line definition of what it means to trust God. You're trusting God when there's nothing you can do about it. I, I used to travel to Ohio every single week for about a year and a half to pastor a second church in Ohio. And I would fly a plane every single week. And so, of course, you know, it, 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 you begin to learn a lot about the airport and the plane and so forth and, and so on. And, and as you're flying, uh, what I realized and what I learned was that the plane has to get up to at least 400 miles an hour to take off. 
and that the plane, it was when it got up to this speed that you don't even feel like you're going that fast. Like, I, I don't think I could even be in something going that fast, but when it's getting up to this, this speed, then it actually is, it gets caught by the wind. So I would always be enamored by the way this plane would get caught by the wind. It don't make sense. If you look at the plane and you look at how you throw a ball in the air, you throw all the stuff in there, and nothing just does what a plane does, right? And it, it just didn't make sense. But every single week I would get in this plane and I would fly and we would get to the top of the runway and the pilot would take off and we'd be racing and I would always be wondering, what's gonna happen if you run out of track? <laughs> what are you supposed to do? What if it go up a little bit, come back down? I'm just thinking all of you know, these scenarios, right? But every week, that plane would take off racing, and all of a sudden, it would lift up, and then it gets caught in the air. And once it got caught in the air, you know, it's kind of like once you, it's a little rough at first, but then it smooths out. And then by that time, you know, if you were nervous about flying, you know, the, the takeoff was always a little, little, a little unnerving. And so... Once we got to it, I would always say to myself, I would have an exhale moment, right? Once we got in there, once it got caught by the wind, I, I would always say this to myself, well, okay, well, there's nothing, nothing I can do about it now. Like, because now, because in a matter of one minute, we done gone up in the air, and now I'm above the clock. Yes. I know I can't survive a four-story fall. Now, I, I'm, way, I'm way beyond my ability to manipulate my outcome. At this point, it's nothing I can do about it. And God spoke to me in that moment and said, you know what? That's where I want you with your trust in me. I want you to get to the place to where you are comfortable when there's nothing you can do. You haven't done his will until you've done it, until there's nothing you can do about it. You haven't said yes enough to God until there's nothing. See, you got to say yes and walk in his will so much till you get to a place. Some of y'all got your own religion and it's not the one that God gave you. That's why Paul said, who has bewitched you? Who has given you? This is not the gospel that I gave you. The real gospel, Jesus Christ, says that if you the just shall live by faith and that if you will trust him, come on, he will take you into places where there's nothing. Where there's nothing you can do about it. Because faith, and I'm, I promise you I'm 70% done. Faith, so interesting to me because we call ourselves people of faith and, and, and we seem to seek God and we seem like we want to trust God, we want to do his will, but, but there's so much of our own will involved in mixed into what's going on that we diluted and, and broken down everything that God is trying to do uh, for ourselves and and so what 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 it manifests for us humanly here's how we frame it what it manifests as is failure yeah. <laughs> and so so when failure shows up in your life <laughs> it, it, it's not always because you're so weak yeah. or so uneducated That's right. or so sinful or that you are so, so, so bad. Or that God is not good. Or that God doesn't want to bless you. Or that God is powerless. It is not that. Sometimes when failure shows up, failure is simply God redirecting you to what he is into. Trying to get you off what you're into. I gotta help you here. Because some of y'all have been trying to build business. You've been trying to build relationship. You've been trying to work on so many different things in your life. And you keep experiencing failure. Uh -oh, uh oh And so you keep on you keep on telling yourself no, you gotta fight harder, you gotta do it better, you gotta lean in more. And I'm telling you that sometimes your determination is evidence of your unbelief. I don't know what's I preach like this. I said sometimes your determination to keep going, because everybody's a motivational speaker on Facebook now. And so keep going, keep keep riding, keep trying, keep leaning in. No, baby, sometimes failure is trying to get you to let them go. Because maybe you were into something that God is not into. Maybe, maybe you're building something that he's not building. Maybe. Can I help somebody for 2020? I, I mean, I mean, you, you, there's a such thing in life called flow. 
I'm almost at peace like this. Uh, there's such thing as flow. Everything that God does is animated. It is in rhythm. It is in action. That, that, that's why the life story is not told in the birth date or the death date. It's all in the dash. It's in the dash. It's, it's in the activity. It's in what you're moving and shaking and doing in between the born and the death day. It's, it's what's happening, right? And so when you're born, you anything that is created or born or given life by God is put into animation and is given a rhythm. A rhythm. That's why it's winter, spring, summer. For, yeah, it just keep it. It just keeps going around. It's a rhythm. That's why the sun is here because the earth is rotating on its axis. Come on, and around it's, it's just all in rhythm. That's that's why the trees and the leaves fall off the trees. There's no, you mean no leaves on no tree. All of a sudden, and then all the at the right time, it starts coming right back. To you. Without you having to wake up and remember it, you ain't got to remind it. You ain't got to set a clock or a timer for it. It just it's all in rhythm because everything alive is in motion and in a rhythm. God created a woman, and every thirty days he has a cycle. It's just in a rhythm. I got to help you. You get in the bathtub and you wash up real good. When you get out, there's a ring around the water. All the dead skin is falling off, but new skin is coming back. It's all just. The rain falls down from the heavens and it falls to the ground. And but then to stay there, it seeps into the ground and the trees soak it up into the roots and then give it back off and it's going back and it's all in. It's I'm all free. Everything God's got is alive. It's all in a rhythm and it's, it's all just happening. And so sometimes what, what we're doing as believers when we're off into our dreams. Come on. And I, I believe that you got to be a dreamer, but you still got to keep it in line with what God is doing. I, I believe you should be hopeful, but you got to keep it in line with what God is doing. See, the one central thing that you got to keep in mind, no matter where you're at and what you're doing, just make sure that you're with what God is doing. Because God is over here flowing in what he has ordained. And you got to be careful when you're over here doing what you're trying to ordain and you don't have any flow. When God is saying, when there's no flow in what you're trying to do, maybe you should stop and find out what I'm doing and come over and get with what is flowing and what is flowing sometimes will unlock what wasn't flowing. That when I'm failing, he's only calling me to trust and redirecting me to what is flowing. You can't be mad because God ain't with what you're doing. Yeah. <laughs> Every time you deviate from what he is leading you. Now let me talk about being led. Because everything's in the flow. So God is in the flow. So when you find God, you'll find flow. Where you see flow at, you tend to see God. Now another word for flow, let's, let's, let's do some synonyms for this real quick. Uh, flowing, you can also call it it. Uh, a light. Let's say light, right? Uh, Jesus says, I will give you the light of life. Those that believe in me shall never walk in darkness, but they shall have the light of life. Now, he calls life a light. You got to catch this, all right? Now, he, he, he calls life as a light. There's sunlight, there's candlelight, come on, there's incandescent light, all right? But then Jesus says that life is a uh huh. So what he says is that I will give you the light of life. That means that what God will do is that when you're living your life, he will show you things and places in spaces in your life that are living and thriving. And you got to follow the light. The light is the light. If you were walking in a dark basement, a big room that was dark and you couldn't see anything, but you turned on a light, you wouldn't walk away from the light. You would follow where the light lit up the path. It doesn't matter that there are other ways. That's right. That's right. You're walking within the, the light. And, and so it's not a flashlight and it's not a candlelight, but it's a life light. And he says that you should stay away from dead things and dead people and dead situations. Uh oh, come on. And start following after those things that are alive, that give you life, that vibrate you. Come on. That wake you up. That turn you on. I never heard it. I'm just trying to describe what it feels like when you find something living and it's alive. God says, follow after that. And you should never walk in darkness. That's right. 
He says, I'm going to give you the light of light. That light is the same thing as the flow. When you find God's flow, you want to get into it and you want to get with it. And this is about trusting God. I'm finishing now. This is about trusting God. Because you cannot trust God. You, you, you can't trust God only when things are going the way you think they should go. You have to trust God when there's nothing you can do about it. The only time believers tend to really come close to ever really trusting God is death. Because everything else, we have a bright idea and we think that we have enough power and enough pull to fix it our own way and manipulate the outcome so that we don't have to, that we don't have to really do what God is calling us to do. So think about it for a second. I just want you to get this in your heart that, that God's will for your life is not always a deep thing about you building a church per se. Or building a ministry or doing something great in men's eyes. God is leading you concerning your own life, your own well-being, your own self-care, your, your own mental health, your own emotional health. He's, he's leading you in ways that are not supposed to get. See, the church going to be all right if you all right. It's the sum total of his parts. That's why Jesus said, no member can say to this member, we don't need you. The nose can't say to the eyes, we don't need you. And the feet can't say, we don't need you. Everybody needs everybody. But the body is as healthy as the sum total of his parts. And if you and I would come to a place where we really trusted God, where we stopped trying to build what we wanted to build. Now, here's, here's why it's so important to trust God. Watch this. It's trusting God because you have to trust God to let go of what you want to do and do what's flowing and what's alive for you, trusting that somehow God is still going to bless you in that place of your desire Glory. even if you can't see how he's going to bring you back around to that thing <laughs> this is real trust it's real trust it's real trust it's like, 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 like because, because have you ever been frustrated because what you wanted to do was something for God because sometimes even when stuff you want to do for God ain't what God is doing for you I have no idea Some, some, sometimes you're trying to do something and you're trying to do it for God and God said, well, that's not what I need you to be doing right now. I got to help you here. There's not enough folk that know how to come to God and say, God, where do you need me to be right now? Because if you've ever been around any kind of a building project, even as subtle as a a, a, a uh, what do you call those? The uh, the they make suits. A tailor. A tailor. Building is interesting, right? Because sometimes it don't make sense. Because if we was building, we would build all of the outside of, and we would do everything, and then we couldn't bring the inside in. But when you know how to build, sometimes the certain things have got to come in first. But in my mind, I would just put the building up, right? <laughs> They'd be like, well, you gotta take all that carpet up and all that floor up and all that. Because that's because building is interesting because if you don't understand, sometimes it's done out of a logical order. Because right. right. every time I would watch a tailor make a suit, he would be making it from the inside. <laughs> like reverse, you know what I'm saying? They're sewing it off. Everything's being cut and sewn up. And you think, you're like, that's not going to be a suit. It's wrong. It's, you transposed it, and, and the tailor just finishes it up. And then when he gets done, he shakes and cuts all the little threads off, and then he shakes it and flips it inside out, and voila. I think, but he was sewing everything on it. It just looked. Sometimes they're building a building, and, and it's a big old crane in the building, and so forth, and things are happening. And you're saying, how is this going to happen, this process? And there's, a, there's, there's just a strategy to building yeah. and creating. Yeah. And so even when you in your good intentions want to do something good for your family, yeah. 
good for your fiance, good for your children. If it's not exactly what God is doing right now, you have to trust him enough to say, I'm going to put a period on that right now. And I'm going here and do what I really need to be doing. Because here's where God is flowing at. Uh oh, it's a hard thing to go get with what Because the other lie is, I told you a couple of lies, right? The other lie is that we always want what God wants. Yeah. <laughs> if you ask most Christians on the spot in front of vote, do you want what God wants, they're going to lie. <laughs> and say, oh, yes, I do. Bless his name. I want what God wants. That's what they're going to say. But it's only in your private parts. Those private spaces in your heart, in your house, yeah. where the same God is yeah. trying to lead you. Yeah. It's saying, I'm flowing over here, but your desire is over here. Yeah. And your desire could be a good desire. But just because it's good doesn't mean that it's God. Yeah. Even though good and God are kind of together. Yeah. <laughs> but you can be doing a good thing and it still not be a God thing. I know. Thank you, sir. Mm -hmm. you remember the young ruler who said, What must I do to have eternal life? Yeah. Yeah. Jesus said, Keep the law. He said, Oh, yeah, I paid my tithes, I obeyed my parents, I did this. I... And he said, But one thing you like is you did good things. Well, that's what they, a God thing. There was a group of men that came up to Jesus and they said, Man, we cast out demons in your name, we healed sick and they, they was doing wonderful works. And Jesus said, depart from me because I never knew you. But we were doing works in your name. I'm just trying to get across to you so that you don't be so confused about why things don't work out in 2020 for you. Because just because you pumped up and motivated and it's a new year and you got your resolutions and you cut off all the dead and all stuff, you did all these wonderful things and you got your mind made up and you working out and changed your diet and everything's wonderful and you, you, you got a swag and an attitude with it. It can be as honorable, it can be as good, it can be as noble as you think it is. But it still might not be where God is. And the declaration is accept the Lord builds it. If you build it and he's not building it, you're building it in 